Hello class and welcome to the Super Dodgeball NES Guide and Walkthrough right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Briggins. I'm your instructor, Professor Briggins, and Super Dodgeball is one of the top, top tier NES sports games for my money. Probably in the top three. I'll have to put some thought into making an actual list at some point, but there's nothing like it. Plain and simple, that's the best way of putting it. Those who are familiar with this game know how good it is. In terms of difficulty, it's not that difficult. There are three difficulty settings, but even on the hardest. I'm going to go ahead and give Super Dodgeball a 3 out of 10. On the frustration scale, this equates to letting out a four-letter swear, probably because you just lost your best player. Spoiler alert, it's Sam. We'll talk about that as we get into it, but uh, yeah, there's a lot to cover. Fluff is going to talk about the different character types. Blaze is going to rank the Team USA members based on their power shots. Between those two, you can decide for yourself who your ideal lineup is going to be. I'm going to offer my ideal lineup for Team USA, largely based on power shots. But uh, yeah, let's run the intro. There's a lot to cover, a lot more than you would think in this Super Dodgeball NES walkthrough and guide right here on Video Games 101. Alright, before we get into World Cup play, which is kind of the main style of play, the story if you will, I'm going to check out a little bit of Beanball just to go over the controls. Beanball is a, uh, you can choose from any of the, the six team members of Team USA in this kind of solo mode right here, you against the rest of Team USA. Beanball is uh, essentially just, I always pictured as these guys get out of work after a, a grueling day, you know, inner office politics, how they are, you're just sick of everybody that you work with. And uh, so everyone agrees to get together in the parking lot with a dodgeball and uh, battle it out to the death, essentially. I know that that's not an office in the background. Fluff actually has some information on that and how it relates to... Well, I'll let him explain it, but uh, this is a good point to go over the basic controls of the game. Pretty straightforward with catch and throw being B, so when you're on defense you want to hit that to grab the ball. You can pass with A. Most importantly, double tap a direction to run, and then while you're running, hold B to do the power shot. That's the most powerful move in the game. Everybody has a power shot. They're unlimited, so you don't have to worry about running out of them or anything. You can also jump by hitting A and B together, and you can do a power shot, especially if you, you're running when you do that jump, and then hold B to do a, an aerial power shot, which can be more powerful in some cases, but Blaze is going to talk about the, the different power shots for each member of Team USA who we control in this game, but let's reset and start with the World Cup play, kind of the main mode in the game. There's three different difficulties. I'm going to stick with normal simply because you get the same ending on all of them, and on difficult, they just the other team just catches the ball way too often and uh, just becomes a bit of a grind, so I recommend sticking with normal. I like Sam, Randy, and Bill. We'll talk about that as to why I went with those in a moment. The Briggs notes... Just always give Sam the ball, use his power shot, his ground one. You'll see why, we'll talk about that. But we're starting off with the all-star team as our first opponent, and I never understood why. Fluff, could you maybe explain why we're starting off against the all-stars? Maybe. Uh, so this goes back to the regional difference between the Japanese Famicom version and the international NES version. In the Japanese version, you play as the Neketsu High School team. This is actually one of the high schools featured in the Kunio Kun series, which this game is a part of, which I referenced. Incidentally, the cover art, which depicts a character getting beamed in the head by a dodgeball, is a reference to a cutscene from the original title in the Kunio Kun series Renegade. But I digress. Team USA serves as the final rival team in the Famicom version, Super Dodgeball, as you face them, you guessed it, in New York City with the Statue of Liberty looking on in the background. This stage was recycled to be the American All-Stars home court in the NES version, which is why what is arguably the most dramatic and epic setting for a dodgeball match is seemingly wasted early on. 
For comparison, the Japanese stage from the NES version serves as the first match in the Famicom version as you take on another Japanese high school, the Hanazono High School, which is basically the Famicom's version of the All-Stars. Anyway, now that everyone is probably completely confused, I'll see myself out. <laughs> no, I think I got it. Thank you very much, Fluff. And actually, before we go away from you, I'm told you have a fact about this music? That's right, Professor. The music playing here in the England stage is a mashup of two classic songs from the Beatles, Get Back and A Hard Day's Night. Oh yeah, I can actually hear that, though. The da 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 Jojo was a man who... Yeah, you can hear it now. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. I never picked... I'm a massive Beatles fan, too. Never made that connection. So we're headed to India now to take on Team India. Shocker. What a coincidence. But you'll find that pretty much every team has something which they excel at. You see these guys don't have a lot of hit points, but every shot that you land on them does very little damage. And there's actually a reason for that. So, Fluff, would you mind walking us through the different character types in Super Dodgeball? You wouldn't be blamed for assuming that all the players are the same outside of their special throws, but you'd be wrong. There are six unique player types, each with a dodgeball-related stat in which they excel. For instance, Type A, or Sam on Team USA, excels in power, meaning their throws land the most damage, not to mention they generally have the most health bars. Type B, or John, excels in endurance, meaning they take less damage when hit regardless of how many health bars they naturally have. Type C, or Mike, excels in catching, making them the best for intercepting balls thrown by the opposite team. Bill, who's Type D, excels in agility, meaning they move the fastest around the court and recover from throw or catch animations faster than their teammates. Type E, or Randy, excels in finesse, meaning the ball can more easily be controlled after throwing it. Lastly, Type F, or Steve on Team USA, excels at throwing, giving them the ability to make powerful throws without having to do a special throw, or a power shot as it's called, not to mention their balls wind up in the hands of allies more often. Each team features one of each of the six types of players. If you care to know the exact types as they relate to your opponents, you can theoretically change your lineup to force the computer to possibly form a more favorable lineup, but in my opinion, that's putting way more effort into this than it warrants. Agreed, Fluff, thanks. Uh, admittedly, if there was a button to actively and easily switch players during matches, there's not. <laughs> you could work some strategy in by switching to your Type C player while playing defense, you know, to always have the best chance to catch the ball, but because player switching happens automatically and kind of awkwardly with whichever player is closest to the ball, yeah, just don't overthink it. Um, instead, like I've said before, I like to focus on the power shots. Uh, so now with an overview ranking of each team member of Team USA based on their power shots, let's go to Blaze. All right, this is my Super Dodgeball player guide for the members of Team USA here in Super Dodgeball. First, number six, going from worst to best, we start with Mike. Note that these players are ranked in this list based on the uh, effectiveness and kind of awesomeness of their power shots, their special throws. Strictly speaking, Mike has the best hands on the team for catching. If you're playing on a harder difficulty and you're having trouble, you're getting a hit a lot from the special throws from the other team, you might want to have Mike in the lineup to have him catch a lot of those balls. But when it comes to power shots, Mike is very boring. Whether he's in the ground or the air, he has the basic wave ball. See, it just kind of goes up and down a little bit, kind of side to side, depending where he throws it from. Very boring. It's one enemy from the other team. Nothing to write home about. Number five, we have John. He has the wave ball on the ground. In the air, he has one of the more interesting looking shots, the three and one, where he got these mini balls, which kind of uh, converge into a larger ball. Looks pretty cool, but again, going to leave him on the sidelines. Next, we have Steve at number four. He's got the grab and carry on the ground, which means it will pick up one or more members of the other team. Very useful. Uh, then you have the up and down shot in the air. A little less noteworthy in that respect, but still, we're going to leave him on the sidelines for now. That grab and carry is nice. Steve, not a bad alternate if you want to mix it up every now and then. 
And now we get into the members, which I like to have in my uh, inbound team every single game. Number three, Bill. He's got the seeker for the ground and the air. This is basically a heat seeking uh, dodgeball, which comes after, seeks out the uh, other team's members, tracks them down, usually pretty effective at landing a shot and very menacing coming in from above. Number two, the second best player based on power shots is Randy. On the ground, he does that frisbee shot where the ball gets all thin and kind of wobbles back and forth. Looks very cool. But one of the coolest shots in the game is his air shot, his air power shot around the world. I call it such because when it lands, it sends the guy across the, the, uh, the entire world, knocking him to the right. His show back up on the left. Sometimes if you hit them hard enough and they're in the right position or the wrong position for them, they will go around the world twice. Very cool when this happens, but come on. Number one, no one was going to displace Sam. He has the heater on the ground. Uh, the asterisk means, once again, this goes through multiple players on the other team. Doesn't stop unless somebody catches it. Just keep feeding Sam the ball. Uh, once it goes through everybody, just have your outside guy pass it back to him. Repeat the process. In the air, he has the same looking shot. It's a bit more powerful, but it only hits one member. But there you go. My ranking list of the dodgeball players of Team USA and Super Dodgeball. Thank you very much, Blaze. So we got Randy here. He's got that around the world move. And I think, yeah, because we <laughs> went around the world twice. I love that. I think it's because we scrolled the screen a bit to the left to make sure that he left the screen to the right to uh, get that second time. And I like that he ends up on our side of the uh, of the court, if you will, here in one of the most beautiful settings right here in Kenya. The traction is a little tricky to get used to on this one because it takes a, a minute to get up to full speed when you're getting that throw off. But, but you can see the effectiveness of just feeding Sam the ball like the old game player tape recommend it. And then just finessing that ball to go through as many people as possible. And it gets into the hand of that outside man. And then I like to jump and then throw it back to Sam. That gives you a little bit more clearance, makes it a little less likely that they can intercept it. But uh, repeat that process. And while we're working through Kenya, let's go to Fluff for another Fluff fact. Super Dodgeball is a loose port of the arcade game of the same name, also from Technos, Japan. It's considered to be a part of their Kunio Kun or River City series, which is why the characters feature similar designs to those from, say, River City Ransom, a popular and novel beat em up title from Technos to hit the NES the following year. We talked about the Kunio Kun series in our previous class on Double Dragon, which was at one point intended to be a part of that series, so check out that class for more information. One notable change between the arcade and console versions of Dodgeball is the arcade featured a team captain who was considerably larger and more powerful than the rest of the team. The console versions also feature two extra teams in the USSR and India, as well as the Beanball mode. Thank you, Fluff. Mount Fuji looking on in the background, that Japanese stage that Fluff referenced earlier. And Fluff, I'm told you have a, another fact about the music here, kind of like the English level music. This is referencing something as well. The Japanese level music playing here is a takeoff of the traditional Japanese folk song, Sakura Sakura. Eagle-eared listeners may also recognize this as the theme which plays in Punch-Out when the Japanese Piston Honda is introduced as your opponent. Yeah, definitely hear that though, with that refrain right there. Picturing Piston Honda doing his eyebrows, eyeing us up and down as he's coming over toward us. But yeah, just the same strategy over and over again. It's the most efficient way. Just keep feeding Sam that ball. Take down as many players as possible. Once they get to, I think it's four meters of health or less, then they start to get that exhausted, exhaustion state right there, where you have a split second before they recover. The less health they have showing on the board, the longer it'll take them to get out of that state. So you can take advantage of that if you're quick and just toss the ball back to Sam. And uh, the Team USSR has kind of just the best stats overall. They have the most health, but it still takes a little while to chip away with each successful hit. As their, uh, their defense, if you will, is 
pretty decent as well, but again, unless you're playing it on the most difficult setting, it's pretty straightforward to just keep chopping through them with your, your power shot of Sam. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Just keep going for it, take down as many of the opposing players as you can. And this is the one stage I should mention where it actually matters if you lose one of your players. On the others, it doesn't. You get to the next stage, they're back, even though they, you saw them fly up to heaven like uh, like anyone does <laughs> once you uh, end their lives via a dodgeball. The dark side of the sport, obviously. Um, Fluff has a fact about the importance of ending this one. Boris almost got that one off right there. The change-up, if you will. The, the off-speed toss. But yes, we will get one final. I always like to try to jump over to get that ball. Show a little disrespect, even though it's going to make us drop it if we do pick it up. If you're close enough to the uh, to the line, you can actually grab it, and each time you'll bring it a little closer to your end of the line if you can do that multiple times. It's only if they're really gassed, but... Alright, so... Not quite the final level. So, Fluff, it does matter? Yes, Professor. If any of your players are lost in the course of taking on the USSR team in the previous match, that's where the game ends upon beating them. In other words, you need your entire team intact in order to even take on the Shadow team. There you go. So, if you want that best ending, I suppose, gotta make sure everybody survives through the Team USSR match. And then whoever you brought into that match, they will be the, the Shadow team who you have to play against here. They have all of your moves, your same stats and everything. And yeah, Randy, no slouch catching the ball right there. Yeah, that's what difficult mode is like. It's just, you just throw it again and again. My timing is a little off there. You have a smaller window unless you have the best hands guy on the team, the, the best catcher. But yeah, it's that that's a window into what, gotta be careful here. The ball's starting to creep to their side. Yeah, um, that, that's a little glimpse as to what the most difficult mode is like. It's just a constant, the other team catching your power shots. And and it is, strictly speaking, it's more challenging. It makes, just kind of makes the game longer in my experience. <laughs> Not necessarily more enjoyable, so. It's very satisfying to just keep shopping through the entire team as Sam. Unless somebody gets out in front of this one, I think Bill's done. Yeah, Randy saved your life, Bill. Might lose our bill if we're not careful right here. Try to keep everyone alive here. I don't think it's going to affect our ending necessarily, but... You want to show up in the final match. Obviously this is the toughest out because they just keep catching it. Alright, we're down the two over there. Their bill is down. Still got Randy who could send one of us around the world if we're not careful. Tried his super shot in the air. His power shot. Yeah, that's the most powerful toss in the game, is the airborne one. And they should be exhausted for like just a second. But they'll snap out of it by the time I get this throw off, yeah. This one might get there before they break out of it. We send somebody around the world? There we go, Randy on Randy. <laughs> and he's still on our side. Sometimes you can take advantage of that because they can't get exhausted until they get back to their side. All right, Sam, you do the honors. He is your clone, after all. So yeah, while that airborne Sam power shot does the most damage right there for the win, it's just not as efficient for getting the ball back, which is why we like to keep it on the ground, but there you go. Super dodgeball for the NES. Nothing like it. Just one of the most fun, novel sports titles on the NES, up there with your skate or die if you ask me. Games like that. And I like the nod to the Kunio Kun universe. River City Ransom game. And, you know, they did a few other, like the World Cup Soccer, you get that, those same kind of big head type animated characters. It's fun. I like, I like the, those kind of nods right there. Never made that connection in knowing that they were necessarily designed by the same developer, or if I did, that they were sort of existing in that same universe in that sense. But, uh, but yeah, just a, a fantastic game right here. And super dodgeball for the NES. Please 
Subscribe if you haven't already done so. We do one of these classes every single week. We'd love to have you enrolled. Click that like button. It really does help us out in making future classes for you. And leave a comment. Are you a fan of this game? I'm assuming you are if you're watching this uh, this class. But yeah, certainly one of my favorites. A, uh, a gem amongst the NES library. Certainly amongst their sports titles. But there you go. Technos Japan. That's our time this week. We'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class right here on Video Games 101. Hope to see you for that one. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.